Oh, Skive. It is a board game that takes place in the fictional land of Europe, in which a once prosperous factory nation has decided to close its doors and, well, stop being a country or something, which leaves the surrounding nations with nothing else to do but to claw their way into this land to try and make as many riches as they possibly can with the various remaining goods. Oh, you and up to four other players will be taking the role of these vultures. Basically spreading out, completing quests, gathering resources and a plethora of other bits and pieces to hopefully, eventually, win. The last player to have dressed their animal companion in a funny suit goes first. Let's set up the board. Oh God, it's massive. I don't even begin to know where to start. Well, I, I, let's start by introducing the factions, right? Look over there, Saxons. Who's this over here? It's the Crimeans. What about over here? The Rusviats. I know what you're thinking, over here? That's right, Polniaks. Who's up in the north? Nordics. And what about here and over here on these green and purple spaces. Well, we'll get on to that a bit later. So you've picked on which faction you want to play with, basically being uh, Olga, because, well, why wouldn't you? She has a tiger and a gun. But once you've done that, it is time to get down to brass tacks, by which I mean looking at this second smaller board where you'll be doing basically all of your actions from. Every time it gets to your turn, you'll move your pawn from one column to another, obviously not to the one it was previously on. And you get to do whatever action is along the top here. And these can be things such as moving units, producing goods in spaces, paying money for goods, or paying money for military strength. Oh, that's probably not actually good. But for every top action, there is also a bottom action down here. You know, it's the foundation of any good relationship, which basically means that any time you do something up here, well, you can now, if you have the resources, spend them to do whatever it is down here. And these things can be like using wood to build structures or oil to upgrade the top actions and make the bottom actions cheaper, pots of honey to enlist a cylinder or metal to create a war bot with guns on it. Uh, is, is, is this a war game? Am I about to get bogged down in the minutia of unit movement? No, Scythe isn't actually a war game. It's a worker placement game. These war bots with the guns on them, they're not for war. No, they're mainly used for moving your workers around because these tiny little wooden workers, well, they can't move in big groups or cross rivers by themselves. So they get, they hop a ride on the war bot and choo choo baby, you've got a whole world to explore now. So you'll mainly be darting between all these top actions, moving and producing and gathering goods and resources, all while hoping that when you do any of these top row actions, the bottom row actions also happen to coincide with what you want to do and what you have available. Like, sure, when you produce, you produce two metal currently, that's cool. However, in order to make a, a war bot, it costs you four metal. And also it's all the way over here on bolster for you on this particular game. So does that mean that you have to produce, do some other action just to kill time and an entire go, like probably move or something, because what else are you gonna do? and then produce again, producing another two metal. Now you've got four metal, but on your next turn, you now need to bolster so that you can then spend that four, more, four metal on the bottom action, after doing whatever you want to do with the top action. I don't know, bolster things. And then, congratulations, you've produced exactly one out of four war bots. Oh, God. But what if? What if, my good friend, that the actual game 
was trying to make that entire process as efficient as possible. You're going to be spreading out across the map, hopefully being able to get the resources you want to produce more men at the men farm so you can get more resources on the resource spaces or just more men at the men farm and as you're moving around spreading out your plastic pieces might just happen to bump into another player's plastic pieces in which case it's time for war it's here and it involves your war bots that you use for crop rotation who could have seen this coming? Thankfully though, your warbots are kitted out with guns. More guns and apparently wolverine claws or something. I, I don't really understand it. When two tribes go to war, it's actually quite simple really. You see, each player in the war gets their own little spinner and then they secretly spin a number between zero and seven which is like, you know, their power that they're going to be spending, dictated by this tracker over here, which, you know, I think just shows a particularly disgruntled bird. And then everyone gets to play also a card, which has an extra number on it between two and five. And then whoever has the highest number wins and the loser is kicked all the way back to their home territory. <laughs> Well, hold on there, cowboy. You said this wasn't a war game, and, well, that entire exchange looks a lot like a war to me. I hear you saying that. However, the whole point of Scythe is you're trying to basically complete the various objectives by putting little stars on them, and that get you they get you points and finish the game. And two of those, and only two of those, can be gotten through war with your war bots. So, while you can do a lot of war, you only ever really need to do it twice, and you probably won't do it that frequently. Scythe ultimately has a couple of key areas, basically the centre of the board, which is the factory, or like things to get, being little quest markers. So really, outside of those bits and pieces, you're not really gonna go on that many murders, apart from, I don't know, as a big final action to get the last couple of objectives, or if there's someone who's really in the way of a resource you desperately want. Because it's just expensive to do fights. Not only do you have to spend a lot of power, and it takes time to get those disgruntled bird points, by the way. You might want them for, like, you know, an objective or something. Not only does it cost you resources and power, it'll probably make you weaker for another player to just run in and kick you in the robo shins and sending you all the way back to your home space where it'll take you even longer now to move around. Scythe is part area control game and also worker placement game because you will be placing workers down and trying to control a lot of the area on the map. It is a game where you basically try and puzzle out the optimum strategy to make anything. And you know, that might include upgrading a whole bunch to make making your war bots cheaper, which means, you know, you need to get a lot of oil, but to do that realistically, you need a lot more workers from the man farm because then, you know, you make lots of oil all at once. So, you know, you wanna do that and get a lot of workers, but suddenly, you've got all your workers down and producing costs a lot of resources now other than just time. So you need to go on more details to do that so that eventually, once you've done all of those bits, you might be able to make some war bots really efficiently if you happen to stumble up off the crumb of iron. Oh yeah, the moment you begin to feel like you've got a grip on things, the other players will be putting down their final stars and the game ends. There is, well, quite a lot going on in this board game, so much so that it can feel like a bit of a mess. You know, you have secret objectives that you're given at the start of the game, which if you've managed to complete them, congrats, they're worth a little star, which help you win the game. And I get it, they're important because they add a lot of variance. So you, you know, instead of doing the exact same thing each time, you might wanna be doing something different for a different star. The, the factory in the middle 
basically, you know, it's good to control because it gets you a super powerful factory card that has a unique action on it. So you get more actions that potentially are really powerful. And I get that because it has this focal point for everyone on the map to basically charge into and try and compete over. So it means that players are, you know, fighting and getting engaged in one another. The quest tokens, which are scattered around the map, give you extra resources if you manage to get to them. And sure, they're there to basically pull you into the map. Instead of just turtling up in your little area, it like drives you to try and race out early possibly to, to get some. Or the different like bonuses for building your structures in specific ways, fine, like I get it. They're there to potentially add another layer of variance in how you build your structures each game to just make you take that little extra detour in the roundabout way of producing, well, anything. And all of this is on top of trying to juggle actual physical resources, your sort of metaphysical resources like popularity, power, money, as well as juggling and bouncing between these top and bottom actions in a way where hopefully things work out and you can, I don't know, produce another war bot in the hopes that eventually you can produce the rest of your war bots to get a little object, you know, a quest complete and get close to winning the game. You wouldn't really be amiss if you were to say that you felt somewhat overwhelmed playing Scythe as one player announces to the table that they've completed the construction of all of their war bots. Another player over there somewhere says that they've constructed all of their buildings and another has done something else spectacular and gotten yet another objective. Meanwhile, you've got just two workers on the board and you've been spending potentially far too much time slowly moving your way over to a quest marker purely for the sensation of Share some good news from home with the travellers. Trade for a cow and eat steak for dinner. Or convince the soldiers that the patterns on the cows contain coded maps from the enemy. Are any of those useful? Should you have been doing something else with your time? Probably. But at the same time, you will be feeling like that throughout the entire game because every player will go down this different route and different avenue. So you're never really Wait, you, know, you never are aware if you are keeping pace with someone or just wasting your time on meaningless cow-based scenarios. I've had a game where I basically stayed within my like starting area and didn't really explore the rest of the map. I just sat in this location making just hundreds and hundreds of resources and popularity somehow. Did I complete any objectives? Not really, no. Did I control a lot of ground? Also no, but I did have a lot of resources. And did I win? No, no, I, I didn't win. But I genuinely had a lot of fun, like, dissecting this puzzle I'd made for myself. Because you see, Scythe, for all of its many, many moving pieces, like a horrible, war machine with a gun on it, it's quite a fun puzzle. It is a game where you, the player, will present yourself with a puzzle and then you have to present yourself with the solution for that puzzle. The puzzle could be like, okay, this turn I wanna, this game I wanna upgrade all my bits and pieces because that vaguely works well with what I've got and at the same time trying to, you know, make all my buildings, so I've gotta work out the best way of really working all these pieces together and working that puzzle out is quite fun even if you probably don't win because all the other players are racing away on their war mechs and oh no you've been left in the dirt but you had fun and that's what counts from moving around these big plastic pieces of unique looking mechs and people with animals to the fact that everything on these multi-layered boards, all the wooden pieces slot nice and snugly into them and every single time you lift up something, there's a nice surprise underneath it. Ooh, 
a monument fancy. The art is this wonderful mix of like pre-industrial farming and post-industrial mega war machines. Stonemaier Games have made a name for themselves in producing these wonderful boxes full of nice things. And this is a wonderful box full of nice, nice things. It's, it's also a Kickstarter game, which might explain quite a few things. This box is absolutely stuffed full of bits from the uniquely shaped small like resource tokens for iron, wood, oil, and food, the plastic miniatures, which are all unique and different. The workers all have different hats for each faction. And like there are decks upon decks upon decks of different shaped and sized cards for all sorts of bits and pieces, including one for like the single player, which I will never play. I've never played. Uh, this is the first time I've touched them because I might be sad, but I'm not that sad. You see, Scythe is a Kickstarter game. And I mean that more as a genre of game, purely because there's so many moving parts. There's so much going on within this game. So many different mechanics over and over again of just different bits and pieces coming together. That like, it can seem a little messy and overwhelming. It all pays off in the end in Scythe, but also it is bloated very, very bloated. And while we're on the topic of Kickstarter, let's reacquaint ourselves with these two symbols, by which I mean they, excuse me, they are for factions that were like ex essentially um, expansion content that was being made at the same time as the original board game was being kickstarted. They are the Albion and the Togawas who are basically like the Scottish and Japanese, you know, fake versions of them and their expansion stuff. And the expansion stuff isn't included in the box. However, this map that has the expansion pieces on it, this isn't from the expansion. This is from the base game box. Do you see what I'm getting at here? This is possibly the first time I've seen in a board game a case of what is essentially on the disc DLC, which is wild. I get it, I do. Like producing an extra board for the expansion would have been wasteful. But at the same time, without the expansion, these are just colorful circles that are literally meaningless but they are still there always on your board no matter what and like scythe is a game that is like i don't know 55 to 65 united kingdom dollary dues which is cool it's surprisingly great value for money but the expansion that contains those two factions and only those two factions is anywhere from like 25 to $35 dollary dues, which is wild because, you know, these circles are on the board in this game. They are a constant reminder that what you own in this box, that you, you know, what you assumed was a completed product, it's not. You don't have whatever this is. You don't have what this involves. You have an inferior incomplete product. If you want the complete product to make use of these two spots on the map well we better fork up another 30 money because otherwise you will be reminded of your inadequacy all the time whoops i quite like scythe and it's not just because I, it's one of the few games where i somehow consistently win even though it's definitely the sort of game where i shouldn't consistently win but because it is a game where it's just got a delightful puzzle and you don't necessarily feel too bad if you don't do too well because it's a game where you, you know, can happily go a little insane as your brain unfolds as you get wrapped around the four dimensional chess of trying to create this elaborate mental flow chart 
of all the different actions and all the different orders that you need to do in order for everything to work until you're left with nothing but that one shining corridor to follow down, no matter how arduous and roundabout it goes. And you might actually win. And also you realistically probably won't win and will have gone slightly insane. But at least that process of going slightly insane, getting lost in this fun puzzle to tinker with, well, it is just that. It is fun to engage in the puzzle. So Scythe is actually weirdly, despite its size, it's quite fun. I really enjoy it. It's a good game. And it's surprisingly good value for money, given the amount of stuff you get in this massive, massive box. Well, oh, speaking of massive, massive boxes, I'm going to present to you some massive boxes on the screen, which will have videos about some other videos that I've done. Goodness, I'm so glad I decided to do this in one take. Um, first off, if you have thoughts about size, let me know, etc like, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. But otherwise, I have a video here which is about Splendor. I know, it's a new game. It's also a game which has a great issue which I have, which is box sizes. Spoilers, it's, it's all about boxes. Um, or down here is a video about Monster Hunter Rise, which is a video game and I'm still playing it. I have a problem. It's partly depression. Anyway, otherwise you can click on my face orb to subscribe by clicking on my face. Thank you and goodbye.